Hi, so I'm going to talk through exporting your book or your spreads as a PDF um, and I'm going to talk through the Blurb preset, which is a preset which Blurb, um, all books that are uploaded to Blurb have to um, have to have been exported by. Um, okay, so first of all, I've got my spread here. Um, I've just got the one spread, but it's important to remember that um, when you're uploading to Blurb, um, uh, you, you need to have a minimum of 20 pages. So um, whether you've done 10 or um, whether you've done less than 10, you need to add some blank pages to make sure you get up to 20. So um, because uh, what we're going to try and do is I'm going to talk about uploading into Blurb, and then we can obviously test that process so that you understand um, exactly how that works. Um, and um, it will probably uh, pull up some errors, and then you can sort of learn from <clears throat> the errors that uh, Blurb is um, suggesting there are. Okay, so um, I've got my uh, my double page spread here, and as I said, I've got the extra uh, pages. Um, it gives us the 20 pages that we need. Now, when you install the um, Blurb plugin, which is uh, the Blurb template creator, it also installs um, Adobe PDF preset. And if we look down here, it's a Blurb PDF export. Now that's a particular um, preset which uh, gets all the settings exactly correct for um, for what Blurb require. So um, okay, so we're pretty much ready to go. I mean, ideally, um, you would have checked your fonts and checked your images um, and and made sure that all the color space, um, whether you're going to go with sRGB or um, CMYK, um, with the Blurb ICC profile. Um, now, currently, I've just these are the, the images straight out of the camera, um, so they're not correct. But um, I, I'm just going to use these as, as a demonstration. So there's uh, one thing that uh, we can get InDesign to can we can get InDesign to help us with, um, and that's a thing called pre-flight, and that's going to check um, check a number of things and flag up any problems that it thinks uh, that there might be. So to go to pre-flight, so I've got my spread ready, everything's ready to go. I want to go to file. I'm going to go down to pre-flight. That's down there. And this is going to open up a dialog box. And right now, um, we're on a summary. And it's going to give me a summary of all the fonts I'm using, the links and images, and so on and so forth. Now, fonts um, looks good. Um, it's saying I'm using three fonts. There's naught missing, naught embedded, and naught incomplete, uh, and naught protected. Uh, I have got an exclamation mark under it, links and images. So that suggests there might be a problem. Okay, so we can go down and look um, a little bit more in detail of the um, the problems or uh, the, um, that we may or may not have. So let's have a look at fonts. Okay, so this is a list of all the fonts we're using. Now, it's possible that fonts, if they're corrupt or they're incomplete or they're protected, um, or i.e. you haven't got a license to use it, then you can't embed them in the PDF. And that means that um, obviously once the PDF goes to Blurb, they've got no way of um, of being able to open that document without that font. So it's important that you check uh, that you've got the right permissions and everything for the fonts. And this box here will tell you that. If there's a problem, it will come up with an exclamation mark. And if it does, for instance, come up with an exclamation mark and uh, you've got no option but to change the font, there's a way that um, InDesign's got to help us. And what we can do is we just double click on Find Font. And this lists all the fonts in the documents. And by selecting, um, let's say, Minion Pro, um, <clears throat> I can, a bit like um, a spell check, I can find first, and that finds the first incident um, incidents of, of that font, um, and then the next one, and so on and so forth. And I can, you know, change, I can uh, replace with, and I can sh select another font here, or I can just remember it and go back and change it if I need to kern it or whatever. Um, but in essence, it allow it's quite a powerful tool because it, you know, say you've got 40 or 50 pages, it will tell you, you know, Minion Pro exists on page 6, page 8, and page 21. And uh, then you can go and, you know, obviously uh, correct that problem. Okay, so if you've got a problem with fonts, that's how you track them down. Sometimes it's, you know, fonts that are maybe obscured behind um, behind an image, and uh, you're like looking and you can't see it, you know, and obviously this will help you out. Okay, so we're going to just hit done because we don't actually need to do anything. There's no problems with my fonts. <clears throat> Okay, so we're back to the pre-flight dialog box. Now we can look at images, uh, links and images. And it's saying we've got five links found, um, which is good. Um, if you had images that were missing or the links were um, 
you know the um, the links were connected, then that would flag that up. Um, because ultimately you look at the image and it would look all right, but it would actually be a low resolution um, <clears throat> low resolution image. So it's flagging up that we're using five of our images are using um, RGB, um, and that's what it's sort of unhappy about. Um, but in this instance, I'm not too worried about that because I can upload those <clears throat> now. I would, um, you know, I, I would make sure all your images are CMYK using the ICC blurb uh, profile, uh, which I talk more about in the other introduction um, or sort of video tutorial. Okay, so I'm kind of happy there. Now I'm going to look at colors and inks. I don't need to change anything. Printing settings, don't need to change anything. External plugins. So those three there I don't need to change, so I'm going to leave those alone. Now, I don't hit package here. Package is left over from, um, you know, it's a kind of a, a way of exporting your your um, your InDesign spread. Um, but, but nowadays everyone uses, more people use PDFs. So this is kind of a bit antiquated, but it's good for giving you a summary of what the problems are. Okay, so I'm happy with the, 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 this is all correct, so I'm just going to cancel that. So now I'm going to go and export. So I'm going to go File, and I'm going to go to the Adobe Presets, and I'm going to go, oh, and I'm going to go down to my Blurb PDF export. Now <clears throat> I'm going to go to the Output folder, I'm going to hit Save. It's going to say I want to replace, which I do. Um, so the Output folder is obviously the folder you created in your project folder right at the beginning. Um, now this um, dialog box that it's opened up is the regular PDF um, dialog box. Now I don't need to change anything here, I leave it exactly as is. Um, if you change anything it will fail, so you just press export and it's going to go ahead and export all those images and, and, and put all the PDF together for you. So it's going to take a few minutes to do this. So you can imagine that if you've got like, you know, 40 pages or so, this can take quite a while. Um, but okay, so we're done. So we're just going to close this now. Um, I'm going to hit uh, don't save. You can probably hit save. I just don't want to save that. Okay, so that's that. Great. Um, so now we need to upload, to get that file, that PDF, and upload it to Blurb. So here is... Um, website I've already logged in so what we want to do is we want to make a book so this is the default page that opens up um, so you should look pretty similar to this the make book blurb for professionals get started and upload PDF so we're working on the standard portrait size, so you're going to click that button there. How many pages? Well, we've got 20. If you've got type in less than 20, it will fail here and won't let you continue. And what paper? Well, um, I'm going to choose standard paper. And I'm also going to choose hard dust cover jacket. Now, to export the um, the, the hardcover uh, dust jacket or the, the cover for the uh, book, um, you'll need to look at the other uh, tutorial I've uh, done about that. Um, and we need to upload it at the same point as we're uploading the book. Um, you're going to need to have a cover just, um, just to be able to continue. So um, even though you've only done your 10 spreads or you've only done your 20 spreads or whatever, 20 pages, um, you're going to need to create um, a cover for it, otherwise you can't continue. So I'm going to hit uh, continue here, and I'm going to fill in these um, parts here. So the book title. So even if this is a test, we can just put, um, you know, test spreads. Um, author's name. You can put in your name, Dan, and category. Now I suggest we put it under educate education. Um, I can leave this on show blurb white sheet, but um, you can sort of read more up about that if you want to. That's about every blurb book has um, a little blurb logo on it. You can pay extra to get rid of that logo, um, or you've got a different a few different options. So I'm gonna that's that's good for me. So I'm gonna hit next. And I'm gonna um, upload start to upload the uh, the cover. 
OK, so I trust it. So I found my Dropbox, and I'm going to um, so anyway, yeah, find your basically your project folder, and go to your output folder and find where you put the cover f first. Okay, so this is my cover. Can it open? That's going to upload that. Now these things take a little bit of time, but hopefully um, this will go ahead and do this. I'm going to pause right here and um, and. Uh, Unpause when we get there. Oh no! Yep. So yeah, so this comes up, this uploading progress, and it obviously goes through that. Okay, so that's uploaded the uh, cover, and now it's asking to upload the pages, so the actual spread. So I'm going to click on that button, um, and it should open up back where we're left off. So if you put the, the spread and the pages inside the output folder, you should find them pretty straightforward. Okay, you can open that. And that's going to do the same. So I'm going to pause this again while it does that. OK, so um, those files are both uploaded now. And I get this message here. Um, files are now in pre-flight as they continue to upload. So what happens now is that they um, are being uploaded to the server. And their server is going to check a few things. And it's going to um, let me know if there's a problem. And I can view the pre-flight check status. Now, this may take a little bit of time to do that. Um, Depending on how big your, uh, how many spreads you've got, and how complex the uh, the, uh, the spreads are, um, I'm just going to click on this now. But I suspect that it's not going to have done it. So let's just have a look. Okay, okay. So it's actually uh, it's pre-processed it. So the pre-flight check is complete. Your book is ready to be ordered. And along here, I've got PDF upload. PDF pre-pressing, cover OK, so everything's OK. Um, and so I could go through and order my book. Now, obviously, this is just a test, so I don't need to do that. Um, and there's not really any problems with uploading these to Blurb, because if you don't order, um, order it, which obviously you're not if this is a test, um, then it just deletes it after 15 days. So um, you can obviously go through this process, upload the, um, your test spreads, um, and then consequently, you, you, you know, in time your book, and you can, you know, start to check that everything's okay, because, uh, um, you know, when I uploaded the test book for the whole class, there was a lot of problems with fonts and and uh, images not being the right resolution, etc. But um, okay, so that looks all good. Um, yeah, and that's the end of the tutorial.